Hello and welcome to another video from the only YouTube channel that you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it and today's little video is just going to be my standard response from now on to any question or statement that someone may send to or make on my channel pertaining to restoring or fixing the government of America. I really appreciate that people value my opinion enough to actually ask for it since that is something that really never happens here in my real world. I would rather respond in a more personal way, but this particular subject uh, comes up so often and is so complex that I have to do this just to free up some of my time. I'm already starting to get enough messages on my channel that some are being deleted without ever getting a response, and I don't really like when I have to do that. Okay. So currently a whole lot of people are talking about the direction that our government is taking. It seems like just all of a sudden the whole world is taking a turn for the worse and everybody is looking for answers. Often people perceive the past as somehow better than the present and many times will look for ways to make the future more like the past as some kind of a solution. For some reason, and I don't really understand why, Many think of the era just after the American Revolution as a time when all was right in this country. I suspect we have fallen into this trap because of the indoctrination program known as public education. We are more or less coerced into believing that the American Revolution was a war fought by the poor oppressed people of North America to free themselves from the bondage, oppression, tyranny, and injustice of the British Empire. Well, the only reason that the U.S. half of the empire was separated from the English half was so that the ruling class could more effectively enslave the population. Up until the Declaration of Independence, there was no easy way to tax the poor. There were some insignificant taxes charged to items that were directly imported by the British government, but there was no easy way to tax the things that humans needed to live. Things like food, land, income, household items, and tools. It is very difficult to control what happens thousands of miles away even today. And it was even harder back before the days of aircraft carriers and stealth attack drones. It is simply more efficient to have all of your satellite slave nations controlled by their own satellite slave governments. By staging the Revolutionary War, it made the separation seem official, but was nothing but a distraction. Once the war was over, the elitists such as George Washington, Patrick Henry, James Monroe, and Thomas Jefferson were able to completely dominate the population with the excuse that since they had won freedom for America, they had the right to do anything that they wanted to the worthless, working-class trash that they had freed. Think about this. If the Revolutionary War really was a popular uprising by the American working class to win their freedom from the oppressive British crown, then why did they have to get drafted to do it? That's right. The Revolutionary War was not just the first war of the U.S., it was also the first time that the U.S. used conscription to force the working poor of this nation to murder the working poor of another nation. I already know that someone's going to bring up how they can't take away our constitutional rights. Please, please, think a little before you type some stupid comment like that on my page. The U.S. Constitution cannot possibly be the only legal document that you are familiar with. Lawyers just like the ones that made this country, have been manufacturing legal documents for profit for centuries. And if you stack them one on top of the other, they would probably reach all the way to the moon. Legal documents are nothing but paper with words on it. And are never honored unless it is profitable for the elitist involved. The legal document known as the U.S. Constitution is no different. Contrary to popular belief, Immediately after the signing of the U.S. Constitution, taxes became oppressive enough to smother the working class. The tax laws today 
are exactly what our founding fathers intended them to be. A tool of the oligarchy to keep the common people in their place. A fact that may interest anyone who is familiar with the Boston Tea Party is this. After the British occupational forces were thrown out and an end was put to the oppressive tax on our great nation's tea supply, the price of tea increased significantly, making some of America's founding fathers quite wealthy. Something else that a lot of people seem to forget when they speak about what our founding fathers envisioned for our great nation is that many of them had human slaves that they kept in the sheds behind their mansions. Many of these slaves, both the men and the women, were used as sex slaves. Ever since grade school, we have been told that the reason that our founding fathers owned slaves is simply because that is how things were done back then. As if we are supposed to believe that human beings did not develop the ability to distinguish right from wrong until some later date. No, they kept slaves for the same reason that people traffic in human beings to this day. Because they were insanely evil. Come on, folks. This ain't rocket surgery. If you can't use your head, at least search your heart. We are often reminded uh, that most of the founding fathers went to church, and this is somehow used as evidence that we live in a so-called Christian nation. However, they were also quite well known for attending meetings of secret demonic societies. For a fact, most of the symbolism and layout of our nation's capital is based on satanic symbols and rituals. And nearly all of the national monuments are duplicates of demonic temples and churches. But I'm not going to do a video about that subject since a simple Google search of demonic symbolism, Freemasonry, Knights Templar, Pharaoh worship, or Washington, D.C. should be good enough to satisfy your curiosity if you're really interested. When the Constitution was written, most who signed it were already knee-deep in the North American genocide. A list of our earliest presidents is made up almost exclusively of people who had the greatest part in the extermination of the indigenous peoples of North America. This is another line of reasoning proving that the U.S. and England are still just a single entity. The Anglo-American Empire has single-handedly assimilated, incarcerated, or exterminated nearly every indigenous person on the planet. England was slaughtering indigenous people around the world long before they got started over here. Adolf Hitler, who is considered a master at the business of genocide, is said to have based his final solution on American history. He actually admired how much we achieved in such a short time and is quoted as saying that once America became a world power, everyone forgot about the genocide of the Indians and that once Germany becomes a world power, everyone will forget about the genocide of the Jews. If he had won the war, he would have been proven right. Based solely on the little bit of information that I just shared with you, it should be easy to see that any attempt by the common people to restore the republic will fail. The way that you vote will not restore the republic. You're only given two candidates to choose from, and both of them have to prove for a fact that they will do what the oligarchy tells them to, to do decades before they even let them run. Of course, there's always some kind of real person who speaks reasonably and makes perfect sense as there is uh, as well. But if you vote for him, they just throw your vote out. I'm pretty sure that Ron Paul has won two elections so far, and both times they still let one of the other guys be the president. And so what if this time around they actually played fair and let the good guy win? Last I heard, the CIA was still active, and some of them guys are pretty good with a hunting rifle. The Tea Party movement and the Occupy movement cannot restore the republic. And finally, armed revolution will not restore the republic. Nothing that you can think of or do can restore the republic. Because the republic never existed. It's nothing more than an elaborate hoax. 
It never existed anywhere except in those school textbooks that the Empire first used to indoctrinate you, and in those TV shows and other media of the Empire that are used to keep your indoctrination in full force. Now, here's what actually is going to happen no matter what effort you put into making something else happen. There have been hundreds of empires in human history. The Bible mentions many, but specifically mentions seven that would be significant in world domination. In order, they are Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, and the Anglo-American Empire. This one right here. The Anglo-American Empire is the only one not specifically mentioned by name because it came after the Bible was completed. However, John, the last person to write a book of the Bible, called it the empire that would follow Rome. All of these were established with slavery-based economies. All lasted much less than a thousand years. The Magna Carta, the first draft of the Constitution, that's what I said, was signed in 1215, which puts us right on time for imminent collapse. However, <coughs> excuse me, the Bible does mention what it calls an entity acting as an eighth king, saying that it is made up of all of the seven world powers combined into one. The book of Revelation says that all human governments will give their ruling authority up to this one world government. So the establishment of a one world government is even more certain than the collapse of the current one. But according to Jesus, this one world government will only last for a very short time before he returns with all the armies of the heavens to destroy it and exterminate anybody involved with it. Everybody from its most powerful political leaders all the way down to the empire's least important, lowest paid registered voter. The good thing about Jesus waiting till the establishment of this one world government is that by destroying it, he is symbolically destroying not only the Anglo-American empire, but each and every empire that has ever harmed his creation. Quite fitting, wouldn't you say? Almost poetic. If you're one of those conspiracy theorist kooks that believes in some kind of new world order, it should comfort you to know that Jesus believed in the new world order as well. So much so that he promised to destroy it nearly 2,000 years before politicians even started to advertise it. When Jesus was on the earth, he was hated. And for speaking out against the empire, the common people of his time had him executed. When he was hanging there dying, nailed to a piece of wood, I am sure that many thought that they had destroyed him and were quite pleased with themselves. But Jesus is no longer a dying, suffering, mortal human being. And now, it's his turn to do some destroying himself. Please don't try to stop the New World Order. Not only has that job already been assigned, but it's been assigned to the only one in the universe with the ability to do the job. And the only one who has earned the right. But as always, if you don't want to survive, don't listen to me. <laughs>